Hi, we're going to talk about situation ethics, a theory that Joseph Fletcher came up with in the 1960s. That's the era, if you remember, of free love. Love is all you need, said the Beatles. And Fletcher argues there is only one norm, one supreme norm, which is agape love. And agape love is love of a certain sort. It means sacrificial or commitment love, and it's the most often used word in the New Testament of the Bible for love. And it is, in Greek philosophy, the love which means commitment for the stranger, love for the stranger. And if you remember the Good Samaritan parable, for example, Jesus tells a story in response to a question, who is my neighbour? And he ends up telling a story of a man who was beaten up, left by the roadside, and the priests, the Levites, the religious figures of the day, walked by on the other side. And the person that helped the man was a Samaritan, which means an outsider, somebody who's intermarried with non-Jews and was therefore thought to be unclean and unacceptable to the authorities in Jerusalem. And he took a sacrificial route. He placed the man on his donkey, he took him to the local pub, he paid his bill, made sure he was fed and clothed, and so on. And Fletcher says we need to live by that sort of, admittedly, demanding type of love. And he says that it's typified by four principles, four working principles, he calls them. And the first is positivism. He says we cannot prove this norm of love, we have to posit it or if, you, if you, uh, you have to accept it by faith, not by a proof. And once you accept this norm of love, you, you accept its value as a supreme norm, then you begin to live by it and you experience the power of that love. And the second principle is pragmatism. He says we live it in a pragmatic way because Situation ethics lies somewhere between legalism, such as the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, and so on, and antinomianism, which means literally no laws at all. And the nearest thing to that is existential ethics. Somewhere between these two, legalism and antinomianism, we have situation ethics. And it is essentially pragmatic, and that means that we take a pragmatic, not a legalistic line on moral questions. So for example, abortion law in the UK 1967 gives various circumstances under which the, the individual can be considered for a legal abortion. But in Northern Ireland, uh, the situation is different. You're only allowed to have an abortion in Northern Ireland to save a mother's life. So it takes a, quite a legalistic view of abortion rather than a pragmatic view, case by case. Fourthly, or sorry, thirdly, we have um, personalism. Joseph Fletcher argues that for situation ethics, it is the individual that matters, not anything else. So it's not what the Pope says, it's not um, what the government says, not even what the law of the country says. We take a personalistic approach. The individual, their needs, their desires, their welfare, these are the most important questions to a situationist. Is love served in terms of maximising the loving outcome for that person in that particular situation? Fourthly, it is described as relativistic, positivistic, personalistic, pragmatic, relativistic. Relativism, though, is a word that is often confused and misunderstood. Relativism does not mean anything goes. Some people describe it like that. It's entirely wrong. What it means in the context of situation ethics is that everything is made relative to this situation. So it's relativist in a specific sense of the word. And um, the relativism that Fletcher describes, he calls principled relativism. And it's worth thinking about what that means. It sounds like a paradox, because it is. What he means by that is everything is made relative to the one norm, agape love. After the four working principles, he describes six fundamental 
principles and I'm going to talk about just two. The first is that love and justice are the same thing. If we look for a moment at this picture taken by a photographer of a child in Ethiopia during the Great Famine some years ago in the 80s, we see a child and a vulture and the picture asks questions of us. What is our response to the enormous amount of human suffering in the world? The suffering of refugees at the moment from Syria, or wherever it is, and the suffering of this child. What is our response in terms of a loving response? Well, clearly, we would need to redistribute more of our income and wealth in order to meet the needs of a child like this. And love and justice, love, says Fletcher, is justice, uh, justice rather, is love distributed to those who are the most needy. Secondly, of his six fundamental principles, he says that the end always justifies the means. And what that means is that anything can be justified by the norm of love. For example, if we decide that it's necessary to torture one suspect in order to save 3,000 people in a bomb plot, then the loving outcome, if you're going to maximise love, is to torture the one person to save the 3,000. So we can't rule anything out in situation ethics. It's, uh, it has that feature about it as what we call a consequentialist theory, that we need to look at all the consequences and then take a strict calculation and maximise the one norm of love.